Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your rooted or modded Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL from the February security update to the March security update. Now I'm going to be using Fastboot for this and we're also going to be I guess installing TWRP. So first up, before we start, you'll need to uninstall all substratum overlays. Now, this is more of a preemptive measure just in case one of your overlays does mess up something in the new security update. So it's better for you to uninstall all of them. Just go to your manager, select them all, or you could disable them. You don't have to uninstall. I'm just going to disable the selected ones. And then once you've done that, your phone might restart its system UI. And then from there, just unlock again. So that's also great. Now, there's also another note that I need to make, is that the latest version of TWRP, I think it's 3.2.1-0, still cannot decrypt our data partition past the February security update. So if you need TWRP, and this is what we're going to do, you need to disable your screen lock. The, uh, that means you'll need to re-enroll your fingerprints, but I'm sure that won't matter too much, uh, just a little bit of an inconvenience. So go to security and location, then tap on screen lock, confirm your pattern, and then from there, select swipe and remove the device protection. Once you've done all that, we can now go ahead and download a few things. So first up is the SDK platform tools. Now this is just Fastboot and ADB and a couple of other executables that you'll need to use. So just download the one that is right for your operating system. Next up, you'll want to download the latest factory image for our Pixel 2. So I'm just going to click on Pixel 2 on the side here. You can select Pixel 2 XL if that's your device. And what you want to do is scroll down to the bottom and download the one that is right for you. Maybe there's another option for a different carrier. Just select the one that fits your purpose the best and click on the blue download link. After that, you'll also want to download the latest version of Magisk just here. Click on the latest Magisk and we'll download the latest zip. And last but not least, you'll also want to download the latest version of TWRP and the TWRP installer. Now if you go to the twrp.me forward slash capital D devices, you can search up Pixel and then depending on if you're the Pixel 2 or 2XL, you'll be greeted with this uh, download page, I guess. So with the Pixel 2 and XL, you want to download the Pixel 2 installer zip, and you also want to download the image as well, the same version. And that will be the same for the Pixel 2 XL, I believe. Yep, so just download the same things. Once you have these files downloaded, you should have pretty much these five files. So first up we're going to extract the platform tools that we need. So open up platform tools and if you already installed platform tools before uh, maybe in a different folder you can reuse the same ones as long as they're up to date. And you want to extract the ADB EXE and the two DLLs, the fastboot EXE, the libwimp thread dash one DLL, the make f2fs EXE, the mke2fs.conf and the mke2fs.exe as well. Just in case we need to erase anything. And once you've extracted those, I think, eight files, you can close the platform tool zip, and we're going to open up the factory image. And then we're going to open up the zip folder inside. We're going to extract both the bootloader and radio images outside, just like that. And we're going to extract the image zip as well. We're going to be using the fastboot update command just to make this a little bit quicker. All right, that's great. We can close this, the factory image now. And now we can pretty much reboot our phone into the bootloader. So let's head back to our device here. And from there, we're going to reboot into the bootloader. Make sure you got your USB cable handy, like so. And we're going to uh, plug it in first, just to make this a little bit more convenient. And then tap on restart. And then just restart your phone. And then hold the volume down button as soon as the screen freezes or turns black. So just start holding it now and keep holding it until you get into the bootloader. It may take a couple of extra seconds, but once you're in the bootloader, we can now go back to our computer to start the flashing process. So depending on which operating system you're on, there are different ways to execute, I guess, the fastboot or ADB executables. Now I have these images up here right now, depending on whether you're on Windows and using the command prompt or the PowerShell prompt, or if you're on Mac OS or Linux and you're using the terminal. So there are different ways of doing so, and of course you may need to uh, change those files so they are executable in the first place as well, but I'll leave that up to you now Windows or you can what you can do to open up a PowerShell or command prompt window in the same directory is to hold shift and right click in an empty space and Then click on whichever option you have or whichever option suits you 
So here we are. First up, we're going to see if our device is connected. So I'm going to type in fastboot devices. And if your serial number turns up here as a connection, then it means your device is connected and we can continue. First up, we're going to flash the updated bootloader. So I'm going to type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space in the end and drag in our bootloader image. Here it is. And we're also going to flash the other bootloader as well. So we're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader underscore other. Leave a space in the end and drag in our bootloader image once more. Now this is quite important and I'll also have another image that comes up now. And this is where you can choose which partition to flash. So if you can see in your bootloader screen that your boot slot is B and we're going to refer to that to our current slot and that means our other slot will have to be slot A. In any case, the commands don't work out or the, it gives you an error, you can just manually specify which slot you want to flash. So always you'll want to flash slot A and then always slot B as well. Uh, I think except for the image zip. For the rest of the images you do that, so in this case the bootloader and radio. So once you flash the bootloader images, you want to restart your phone back into the bootloader. We can do this by pressing the volume buttons until it says restart bootloader and then we're going to press the power button and our phone's going to reboot back into the bootloader. You can see our bootloader has been updated to the new version 067 and we're going to flash the radio image now. So we type in fastboot flash radio leave a space in the end and drag in our radio image and then hit enter and then we're going to flash the other radio which is our radio underscore A in this case. So we're going to type in fastboot flash radio underscore other. Leave a space in the end and drag in the same radio image. And that should be fine. So once you've done that, we can now do the update command. So we're going to type in fastboot double dash, so two dashes, and then type in skip dash reboot. Leave a space after that, and then type in update, and leave a space after update, and drag in now image zip file that we extracted from our factory image and press enter. So now this is going to extract all the files inside and flash those accordingly depending on which is your active boot slot. So we don't need to specify which slot to update and we can just go through it uh, one way. Okay, so once that's done we can now go and flash TWRP because the updated boot image will replace the TWRP that we've installed on it. So we're going to type in fastboot, boot, and then leave a space in the end and drag in our TWRP image. You want to boot the image and then when you're booted in TWRP, then we flash the TWRP installer and Magisk as well. Okay, so once you're in TWRP, you can see that it didn't ask me for my decryption pattern. If it does ask you for a password, Try rebooting your phone back into Android and removing your screen lock, double check that, or just reboot back into the recovery and see if that works out for you. Now of course you will need to do the same commands before as we don't have TWRP installed, but now we can install TWRP, then we tap on install, scroll down and locate our TWRP installer, swipe to confirm the flash. Okay, once that's done, we're going to reboot into the installed version of TWRP. So I'm just going to unplug my USB cable so there's no black magic going on. Uh, we can go back, back, tap on reboot, and then tap on recovery, and our phone should reboot into TWRP that's been installed to the boot image. Once we're in, we're going to tap install, locate the Magisk zip file, which is not there. Magisk Manager, make sure you flash the latest one, and swipe to install that. And once that's done, we can tap on Reboot System and wait for our phone to turn on all the way back into Android, where we'll see we're going to be updated to the March security update. Okay, so our phone's booted up now, it's going to finish its Android update and we can just have a look. So no data has been lost, which is great. And we're going to take a look at Magisk Manager. Let's try again. You can see we're in 
got the latest version installed. If I just turn on my Wi-Fi, okay, there we go. We've installed Magisk. And let's just have a look at our system, I guess. And we should see we are on the latest version here. Oops. Well, yeah, that would show you as well, but let's go to our about phone and we can see we're on the 5th of March security update level with the latest build number down here. Now, one thing I'd like to mention before you go off is that if you re-add your screen lock, such as your pattern, fingerprints, or pin, uh, TWRP will no longer be able to decrypt your data partition and you won't have access to what's on your SD card while using TWRP, which is a little bit annoying, but that is uh, unfortunately how it is until they release an update that will make it compatible with these two security updates, the February and March one. But for now, you won't be able to use TWRP with a screen lock. So that's about it for this video, guys. As always, you can find me on Discord if you want to have any other questions or if you just want to talk about something. And also follow me on Twitter if you want so you can get notifications and participate in polls and other things before videos come out when I do put them up. And as always, happy flashing.